Now, over a year after signing the controversial Ameri Power deal, the Ghana Police Service has launched an investigation into the details of that agreement to find if there are any persons guilty of causing financial loss to the state. Ghanaians were thrown into suspicion when a Norwegian newspaper revealed that one of the signatories to the contract was a suspected criminal by the Interpol. The police investigation began this week with a search of the home of a former power minister, Dr. Kobna Donko, who also signed the contract. The home of Francis Jatta, a technical advisor for the project, was also searched Tuesday morning, but Mr. Jatta says he's the wrong person to suspect. If government were to give me 300, 320 million today, I would put up that plant, but not in three months. I'll probably do it within a year. Okay? And at, at the time, government didn't even have the money to do the civil work, which was about uh, 24 million Ghana cities. Just the civil work. Ghana government didn't have the money to do that work. So how could he have got the money to do a $320 million project? Therefore, you have to go to a developer. A Mary is a developer. Okay, developers get EPC contractors, they get bonus engineers, they will get uh, equipment manufacturers to get a plan from. They put all these people together and they hold the risk. Okay? Ameri didn't come with Mecca initially. They came with APR. APR is a well-known rental company, big company. But the reason why that Ameri's relation with APR failed was that APR just couldn't give us 10 brand new machines that we wanted. So after the whole uh, project was approved by parliament, we were now hungry because APR couldn't deliver and I'm very hungry to this project. So they were lucky and they got Mecca. And Mecca probably did the job cheaper. Okay, there is nothing wrong with that, in my opinion. It's just business, as far as I'm concerned. But we have to ask ourselves, did we get value for money? I think yes. Because that plant, after five years, you will still have at least 15 years of life out of that plant, which is useful. At that time, it's already paid for, capacity comes with zero, the tariff from that plant can even come become cheaper, which is beneficial to the country. So what did we do wrong? Are you suggesting that the capacity charge for that plant has been essentially affronted, as in paid in the first five years? Yes. Now, if we change this plant to IPP over 20 years, now, one thing we should understand that every IPP is a rental over a long period of time, 20 years. So their capacity becomes smaller because you are paying the same thing. Instead of paying uh, 850 million a month, we are going to pay little, little, little over a year. I must say that government, Ghana government has not paid a peso on this plant to anybody, not a dollar. Actually, the plant is being paid for through the tariff. We, me and you, are paying for that plant. DRE has not paid for it. Okay? So, these people have invested their money. The plant is in the country, in our possession. If that plant got burnt, who is at risk? It's America. America will go after America. Okay? And America will have to make sure they paid America. So somebody is willing to risk here. All right. So we cannot say that. And now I should stress it again. We did not pay America 510 million. America is being paid. The first time they got payment was at the end of March 2016. And we still have three and a half years to go. All right. You talk about the fact that you and I are paying for yes. are paying for this uh, plant yes. through our tariffs, yes. but then the complaint is that because it's highly priced, we're paying a lot more than we probably should be paying. Yeah, tell me how are you paying a lot more when uh, car power ship is seven point two six uh, for capacity and uh, cap and uh, O &M, fixed O and M. So and all is five point five six. So all those plants together we're paying more for electricity. Well, it is because of how we contract our, our plant, okay? If you're doing an open book PPA, you will always pay more because you are taking somebody's uh, model, financial model, no matter how complex it is, and you put it into the port and you come up with the tariff. If we do what we call closed book uh, PPA, which I was advocating in the ministry, then you can bring your tariff down. You put closed book work. It means that we make our model, we say this is what we can pay for. We, are, we want to build a a power plant of say 300 megawatts over the next three years. And we, our maximum that we want to pay in this tariff or capacity is three cents. And with the energy, 11 cents. Then the people can take it, go back and work it backwards and come up with, uh, with, uh, with, uh, with, uh, with uh, their figures. 
Now, if you do open book, they bring you all the things that you've spent and all that, and you put it in. The tariff will be high because that is why, with the same machine in this country, we have various tariffs. Most of our machines are free mined. You ask me why do you have different capacity for the same machine that is the same output? It is because of how it is procured. This one's so easy test. So we should get away from that now and do close book PPA and tender. Then we'll see our tariff coming down. We've done that in the ministry for uh, the solar uh, power system, and from 23 cents, it came down to less than 11, and it's still coming down. So that is the only way we can bring this down. But so long as we are doing PPA open book, our tariff will be high. But in terms of America, which is 5.56, compared to the other one, same power 6. Point something, uh, you know, uh, car power 6, 6.2, 7.26, uh, AXA 7.05, you cannot say that Ameri is more expensive. Okay, so that is what we did as technocrats. We compared all these things and we said this is what. Now, if somebody is making money anywhere, we don't know. I don't know. And I don't think there's any financial loss here. This is strictly business. Somebody approaches you, you don't have the money, you want to do this thing, it's a high purchase. Okay, if you're buying Land Cruiser today of 100000 if you have the money, you drive into the showroom, you pick it up and you go, $100,000. If you want to buy a high purchase over three years, you may pay 200000 at the end of your three years. It's the same thing we are talking about. We don't have the money. So somebody, get somebody to bring the money. He makes his money. Face the person. Don't come and call me Francis Jaka because I have nothing to do with it. Now the Ghana Police Service, however, says the two persons are not being suspected of any wrongdoing and the police is simply gathering information to help that investigation. I earlier spoke with the Director General for Public Affairs Directorate of the service, ACP David Eklu, on this matter. We did not conduct a raid on his house. What we did was to execute a warrant or a court order to search his premises to look for evidence in relation to an issue that the police wants to find out whether somebody is culpable or not. So which issue are you the investigating? It's about causing financial loss to the state in relation to a contract between the Ghana government and Ameri for supply of gas to Ghana. And why are you searching Dr. Donko's house? He was a power minister then. And I, from our information, he was also one of the officers who took part in the agreement or signed the agreement, or he also has knowledge about that uh, agreement on the Ameri deal. Do you have any reason to suspect that he has done anything untoward? What we are doing now, police investigations, preliminary investigations, are not meant to find fault with anybody. They are meant to find out whether there is any merit in the case, whether it is worth investigating, whether it is worth having a criminal charge. So we are only conducting preliminary investigations to find out the facts and then put things in perspective. We are only acting on our mandate to investigate incidents. And this incident, this case has been in the public domain for a long time. And we thought that as per our mandate, we must find out what went wrong, what went, if there is anything that went wrong at all, what can be done. Can we enforce the law in this perspective? So that is all that we are doing. So who authorized this investigation? We are acting based on our mandate as the police to protect the public purse. But this agreement was signed over a year ago. Why now? There were issues that came up later during the agreement. And you are, I think that you are a media man, you know what is on the public domain. So it is good that we clear the air once and for all. So let me just indicate that the investigations we are conducting is preliminary to find out what went wrong. And if it is worth pursuing, we will go ahead. But if it is not worth, that is all. We leave it. Yeah. But even after last year, yeah. after the issues came up, there was still a lot of time to carry out all these searches and do all these investigations till now. Basically, police will monitor crime situations, issue in the public domain relating to crime. So after monitoring, after putting bits and pieces together, we thought that it is necessary to find out further information on this. That's what we are doing. So from last year till now, you've been monitoring? Of course, it has been in the public domain. When did it become a, a public issue? I think you can guess. Your guess is it's as good as mine. So it is good that we should clear it so that it stops lingering in the public domain with different versions coming up. I don't think it helps in our governance system. Yeah. 
So um, you've searched the technical advisor, Dr. Kwabna Donko. Um, do you have any other persons you want to? Investigations are basically to find out whether there is merit in the case in the public domain. Investigations could lead to other things. And I cannot for sure now say that we are ending with Dr. Kwabna Donko. It may lead to other things. You might find something that is connected to another person and it will continue. Yeah, it's a process. And the, along the process, you might have to talk to several people to make a, uh, a full meaning of what you are looking for. A big part of this issue was that came up in the public was the status of one of the people who was a, a witness to this contract, Umar uh, Farouk Zahu, um, the man who is suspected to be a wanted criminal by Interpol. Are you considering that? I am not privy to all the facts now. What I am telling you, what, for what I know, is that the police have started preliminary investigations and the process started only yesterday. So I cannot give you further information about that. Now the minority in parliament is accusing government of targeting them unfairly with this investigation. I had a chat earlier with member of parliament for Damango and ranking member on the energy committee, Adam Mutawakilu. So we've now been joined by the ranking member for the Mines and Energy Committee of Parliament, the Honorable Mutawakilu Adam, member of parliament for Damongo. He's also former vice chairman of that same committee during the sixth parliament. So when it comes to issues of Ameri, he's the one, uh, he's quite knowledgeable about this. Honorable, thanks for joining us. Now, we've heard the police who are saying that basically this is a part of an investigation. These raids or these searches, they are just executing a warrant. You can execute a warrant in a manner that is respectful, especially when the person has not shown any sign of not cooperating with you. It doesn't mean that once you have a warrant, you go down to the person's house and wake him up and ask for A, B, C, D. Because he's been somebody who had been willing to contribute. Even when the Addison Committee was set up to investigate and he wasn't invited, he willingly told them that he is there and when they need any information and they think that he could provide, they should get to him. And they said they didn't need him. They could gather the information that they need and pursue the agenda they want to achieve. And as a result, Ameri paid for them to go to uh, Dubai. They did their investigations. They came back. Where the report has got into, we don't know. But this is and a separate police issue. And this is not separate. They are all intertwined. You cannot say they are separate just like they are separate. It's a continuation because they have not gotten the facts that they wanted and they think that by reading. But there is somebody who has shown willingness to, to, con uh, to, to cooperate. So I don't think that going there dawn was the best decision that the police should take. So in spite of what the police is saying on record, it's your position that the committee is behind this, these raids? I'm saying that that is not appropriate. And not only the committee, but minority in general. Because if you have the warrant, it doesn't mean that you should go there dawn. Mm. Okay. No? Now, a lot of issues are being raised, and we also had the technical advisor to the committee there saying that, look, there's still a lot more to be said about the issue because quite basically, like a lot of Ghanaians believe, we pay too much for these, these plants. I think issues have been raised. Uh, Honorable Katie Amon raised issue. And we are asking, we are all for Mata Ghana. None of the MPs is looking for the downfall of the country. No. We are in it, and we are looking for, for betterment of the, our nation, Ghana. And we have been requesting, if you have further information that indicate that the deal hadn't been good, provide it to us so that we can also look at it, so that your motion that you file for rescission, it should be something that it should be unanimous mm. and consensus. Mm. But up to date, nothing has been given to the minority side. For us to also see the other, the, the, the other side of the deal that he is seeing. But you were in government last year. Some facts were put out by a Norwegian newspaper. Even this year, the policy think tank Imani Ghana has also conducted some research and has put information out. Like what information? Well, of course, the, the Norwegian newspaper's publication were a matter of public record. They say that a simple Google search to find the cost 
of these power plants would have revealed that they, they cost $220 million and not $510 million. Power pitches, these are options that we look at. Outright pitches. As a committee, when it came before us, we look at outright pitches. Government wants to buy. Is it 220? They said that is the unit of the plant. They will have what we call the balance of plant that we need to. That is the first. Still outright pitches. We said, do you have the money to buy? No, we have to go and source for funding. You need to know how long will you take to source for the funding? These are these doom so. These are questions we posed, and we realized that that option will delay, cause more economic loss to the state. So that was Adam Mutawakilo there. He's a ranking member of the, the Energy Committee of Parliament. <laughs>